Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar on CDP reporting, preparing for 2019, hosted by Greenstone in partnership with CDP. So um, for today's webinar, um, we'll be using the GoToWebinar app. Um, so throughout today's presentation, um, you'll be able to use the chat function in there to post any questions that you have. Um, we've got quite a few people on the call on the webinar today, um, so what we'll do is we'll aggregate all of the questions and send them around in an FAQ document following on from the webinar today. So in terms of um, the presenters for today, um, I'm David Wynn, Head of Client Services at Greenstone, and we're joined by Faye Bennett-Hart, who's the Associate Director of Reporting uh, at CDP, and very much our expert for today when it comes to the updating on CDP. So just before I pass over to, to Faye to take off the, the side of the agenda, um, just to sort of recap what we'll be going through. Um, so we'll be having a, an update on the CDP reporting timeline. And a lot of companies are starting to, to look at this year's reporting already and starting to gather data, which is great. Um, and the all important question of what's changed and what's changing in 2019 um, for this year's disclosure. And then a little bit about future of reporting. Um, and then what I'll do is pick back up uh, in the last 10 minutes or so, picking up on some of the kind of best practice areas in preparing your data for reporting. Um, and some tips on improving um, score based around a case study. Um, so you'll see um, on the side, as I say, um, please do use the chat to post any questions um, through GoToWebinar and we'll aggregate those um, and follow up afterwards. So what I'll do um, is I'll pass over to Faye um, and let her introduce herself uh, and take you through the first part of today's webinar um, with the updates from CDP. So uh, Faye, over to you. Thank you, David. Yes, um, my name is Faye Bennett-Hart and I am the Associate Director for the reporting team at CDP. So just to give you an understanding of what that means, uh, the reporting team develops and maintains the content for CDP's questionnaires and the reporting guidance material. It provides the technical expertise and development thought leadership for the climate, forests and water related behaviours needed by companies, cities, states and regions to achieve CDP's mission. Uh, prior to working at CDP uh, last year, I was head of sustainability for a FTSE 250 company and completed the CDP questionnaires for the last eight years, including the last um, 2018. Okay, so for my part of the webinar, uh, I'm going to go through the following. So I'm going to sort of do a bit of um, looking back um, on where CDP has come from and the growth and disclosure that we've had over the years. I'm then going to look specifically at the changes to the questionnaire and results from 2018. And then we'll start looking at this year, 2019 disclosure timeline, the changes to the questionnaires for 2019, of which there are minimal changes, and plans for 2020 and beyond. So, yes, looking back, um, it's incredible to see actually where we've come from. Um, in 2003, there was just over 200 companies reporting um, to CDP um, on climate change. And now, you know, 2018, we've got over 7,000 um, companies disclosing on climate change, water security and forests. Reporting companies now represent over 50% of global market capitalization. And CDP's platform has become one of the richest sources of information globally on how companies and governance are driving environmental change. Last year, we significantly raised the bar um, as responding to investor requests. Um, investors were specifically asking us to move to a sector-based disclosure and we required more forward-looking metrics to assess how companies are planning for this urgent need to transition to a sustainable economy. We integrated with the TCFD, the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosure, 
and ensured that those recommendations were put into the disclosure platform. We're also working towards greater alignment across the themes, climate change, water security and deforestation. And we had a new reporting platform for companies and cities disclosure. These changes were really necessary for CDP's framework to remain relevant and deliver cutting edge value to data users, whilst working hard to reduce the reporting burden for responders. I know that this was um, a large change for a lot of people, um, a lot of previous disclosures, but the reporting platform had not been updated for um, a good many years and this was incredibly important to do and obviously respond to this urgent need to move to a more sustainable economy. It's really interesting to reflect back again um, where we started, where CDP started from um, when initially, originally setting out with only 35 investors um, in 2002. Um, CDP now works with over 650 investors with some $87 trillion in assets and over 110 supply chain members with over $3 trillion of purchasing power. And as I said previously, in 2018, over 7,000 companies responded through CDP, and this was an 11% increase on the prior year. Where scoring for 2018 was concerned, again, significantly increase in numbers for scoring, uh, including the supply chain program, CDP produced over 9,000 individual scores. So a huge amount of work has gone into creating that, creating those scores. And congratulations to all those companies um, achieving the 2018 A-list. This is a huge um, accolade for those companies, con considering the bar being raised for 2018. So 2019, this is the disclosure timeline, something that's available on the CDP website and something that is regularly updated. Uh, we're working towards returning to the normal timelines uh, provided in prior years. And at the end of March, um, final versions of the reporting guidance and scoring methodologies will be available on the CDP website. By the end of April, all programmes will be open on the online reporting system. And by the end of July, um, that will be the deadline for submitting your disclosure. And we're working back to having scores and public responses released by November. So what are the changes for the 2019 questionnaire? Well, there are minimal changes to the question questionnaires. Um, there are no new sectors for climate change and water security questionnaires. Um, only coal, metals and mining sectors in the forest questionnaires will, re will receive um, new but unscored questions. And there are no new questions to the climate change questionnaire. There's, an o there's only one minor amendment to the minimum tier. So there's just one question that was missing from the minimum tier questionnaire in 2018 and will be included for 2019. And there's only one new question for water security and forests, and that's pertaining to water-related risks being reported in, in mainstream financial reporting. In 2018, the CDB questionnaires underwent a, a lot of change with the 16 new sectors um, and alignment with TCFD recommendations and the new online system. So we received a lot of feedback from companies requesting that we keep changes to a minimum, and we have made sure to do that. Any changes that have been processed have been informed by significant feedback from companies and a correction of errors. But overall, there is no significant feedback to the questionnaires. This will allow for consistency, year-on-year -year trend analysis, and enable the copy from last year functionality, which has been requested by so many companies. Over 90% of the questionnaires have either no change or a minor change. Minor change includes a wording correction, an additional drop-down, or a simple clarification. 
a modified question indicates where a data request has been revised. But as you can see from the pie charts, there are very few modified questions. There are no major changes for the 2019 questionnaires. Just to give you a brief example of a, a minor change, here is a question, as a cross theme question uh, appearing in the climate change questionnaire as well as water and forests. And it's where you get to identify the position um, and you don't need to include any names. Um, the person on the board with responsibility for climate related issues or if it's water related, forest related. Um, and then in, in this, it's just an additional drop down. You've just got board level committee um, as, as an option now, which is something that was requested by a lot of companies. Here's an example of a modified question. This is the financial impact question, which again um, is in both the climate change questionnaire as well as water and forests. And here we were getting a lot of feedback from companies saying that they weren't able to just provide a single figure for their potential financial impact. So we have um, provided more flexibility for this question. And now it's possible to select um, from these particular options, yes, a single figure, or yes, an estimated range. Um, if yes, an estimated range is selected, then the two columns um, that you see on the slide will pop up um, and you'll be able to put in a, a minimum and a maximum to give an estimated range. Uh, but there's also the possibility of selecting, no, we do not have this figure and therefore um, no need to put in any more data on that. Also um, new and requested for um, 2019 disclosure was the requirement for auto-populating of answers. So having um, answers from 2018 copied forward into the 2019 response and we have been able to do this um, where applicable for questions. So um, this will be identifiable uh, with an icon, um, as you can see on the slide, but just make sure that you review, review the auto-populated answers carefully, um, making sure that the answers are updated and accurate for the 2019 disclosure. If you want any more information on the changes, then these are documents are on our website. Um, you can go into um, CDB questionnaire changes um, and they're all mapped for climate change, forests and water security. I've got a few tips on your next response as well. So these are um, yeah, things that I think are important to consider. Uh, the, as I said before, please make sure you review the copy forward from last year answers and make sure that they're edited um, to make them relevant for your 2019 response. Do not skip questions without making a selection. Um, this is really important. Um, last year we had quite a few um, companies, particularly in the forest, uh, responding to the forest questionnaire, not selecting a commodity. So obviously this makes it really, um, it makes it impossible to score if we don't understand what com what commodity um, is being selected for um, this that particular company. So please make sure that you don't skip any questions, make, you know, make the appropriate selections. Uh, make, uh, avoid blank answers. Um, if you've uh, done a review of something and you've um, actually calculated that there is zero, um, you know, maybe it's emissions, zero emissions for that particular activity, then please make sure that you put a zero. If we don't, if there's nothing written and um, there's, there's no number selected, then uh, we, we don't know, um, you know, we don't know what you don't know. So that's, that's how it will be scored. Uh, use specific, company specific examples. It's really important. You know, we want to see how companies um, are transitioning to a low carbon economy and we want to see how that is specific for your company. Um, 
so that's really important to make sure it, you're putting that in the um, please explain boxes or comments boxes and um, probably really simple but um, yeah read the scoring methodology that will give you um, yeah, even more insights into what it is important to be um, yeah, putting in there to increase the possibility of um, yeah increasing your score so an updated version of the scoring methodology will be up on the website at the end of March So looking ahead, um, changes are planned for 2020. This is um, when we will complete our alignment and the coverage of the high impact sectors for TCFD. So for the climate change questionnaire, we will have the financial services um, sectors, banking, insurance, asset owners, asset management um, in the climate change questionnaire, as well as um, the materials, capital goods, real estate, um, also in the climate change questionnaire. And you know, looking beyond that as well, um, CDP is also working with other reporting frameworks um, such as CDSB, SASB, GRI, um, in, uh, in the corporate reporting dialogue where we're working together with the other frameworks to make sure that we are looking at where we can align better for the future and reduce the reporting burden for the future. Okay, that's the end of my slides. Um, thank you very much. Um, and I will hand you back over to David. Great, thanks, Faye. So um, thanks to, to Faye and CDP for taking us through um, the changes of which um, they're minimal, which I'm sure a lot of companies will be um, very pleased about in terms of um, you know, reporting consistent information from previous years um, within that. So just to close off in the, in the last um, 10 minutes, um, what we're going to have a look at um, is some examples in a bit more detail around the data side um, of reporting. So just by way of introduction, um, I'm David Wynn, Head of Client Services at Greenstone. So Greenstone, we're a software company that have been providing software to companies for over 10 years to help them manage their sustainability data for reporting. Um, and that's evolved over the years across environment, health and safety, frameworks reporting and supply chain. Um, so we're a CDP accredited software partner as well as um, being a software partner of GRI. So very much our day-to-day -day is working with companies on the data collection, and CDP is one of the key drivers um, for a lot of companies um, in terms of using the system to aggregate data for reporting um, to disclose good information. So it's no, um, it's no secret that um, there are, the landscape is just increasing in terms of more and more acronyms and more and more frameworks that companies are trying to collect sustainability and non-financial data to report to. Um, so there's example, lots of examples here, um, as well as having um, internal frameworks as well for collection. So with that landscape evolving and more investor requests for information and more data being um, collected, um, the approach for data collection has shifted in a lot of organizations. So where historically companies were able to maybe think about siloed data collection, so for example, they might collect data for GRI report and then CDP, then looking at SDGs or other frameworks um, in a siloed way, um, because of that landscape evolving and more frameworks coming through, um, companies are having to think about it more holistically now. Um, and framework mapping is very much a kind of key, uh, a key thinking piece. Um, and so from a technology perspective, um, that's kind of where we sit within, within the market. So rather than thinking about these as individual tasks, um, what a lot of companies are doing are looking at how they can map those um, to each other. So um, on this graph here, that's quite straightforward, a sort of client example, what we've done is uh, you know, mapping and having a look at the investor focus requests. So at the top right here of our graph, we've got the focused and prescriptive requests 
from the likes of CDP, SASB, DGSI that are asking very specific questions versus some of the more flexible frameworks like GRI and UN Global Compact that have a larger element of materiality to them where a company is able to define what they want to report. So the challenge comes from a data perspective in terms of how that data you're collecting feeds these different frameworks that are designed um, to do different things and, and gives different stakeholders the information that they need. So um, that's the sort of uh, space that we sit in and the frameworks module that we, that we work with companies on is very much designed to facilitate that. So just as an example here from the climate change questionnaire, um, where we have CDP embedded within the software um, and you can distribute the questions to different stakeholders within the business um, so that they can complete the questions that are relevant for them um, and that data is then approved and aggregated. Um, the real value comes, I guess, from the framework tags where you can then map those to other frameworks or other themes or pillars within the organization um, to be able to then export and analyze the data according to those tags. So that's very much the kind of um, the, the where technology sits within this kind of data collection um, that, that generally is more qualitative. And what we often see uh, within organizations is a real kind of heavy lift towards um, the springtime in terms of looking to collect it from different parts of the organization. So the idea is that um, by collecting it through a system, you're able to then um, be more efficient in terms of the collection, but also have a bit more transparency in terms of what's there. So just drawing an example um, from, from a case study from one of our clients. Um, so this is a company um, that has a uh, through about 3,000 staff, mostly in the UK, but operations elsewhere, FTSE 250 um, company. And they weren't reporting two, two years ago. So their, their first report was, their uh, first CDP reporting was last year. Um, and really the experience for them, I guess, on the whole was very much about um, putting a more focused lens on their sustainability data and collection. So CDP um, allowed them to do that and allowed them to be able to look at the data with a bit more rigor. Um, and some of the key things that they kind of took away from that was, um, we tried to support them on, was ensuring firstly a realistic timeline for the process. Um, so CDP have obviously the timeline defined for the reporting process um, and being able to work back from that um, to define what you need to do within the business from a data uh, collection perspective. A key part of that then is really engaging senior sign-off stakeholders um, very much uh, very early in the process and getting visibility um, within the business of who is going to need to be looking at and signing it off. And then um, from, a, from a sort of software perspective, it was with them it was very much about um, looking at how we could use the software to model data where there might be gaps at that point within the year for reporting. So using the kind of uh, methodologies within the system to get that to do the, the legwork for, for modeling. Um, and looking at uh, the sort of document management and tracking of variances alongside that process. The final two points then I'll just pick up in a bit more detail um, because it's quite interesting that within for, for these areas. Um, the first one here was around looking at tracking initiatives throughout the year. And secondly, um, future proofing for, for assurance. So on the initiative tracking, um, for, for this company, but also for a lot of others, um, this will tend to be an end of year process. Um, so CDP asks specific questions about initiatives and much more so now, particularly the investor community, are looking to companies to be able to report on the future and what's planned in terms of projects and activities to meet science-based targets or commitments that they've made as an organization. So um, what we, what we um, work with a lot of companies on is enabling that reporting um, on an ongoing basis. Um, so looking at, um, this is an example here from within the software, looking at uploading initiatives on an ongoing basis and then being able to um, categorize those in terms of their stage and then um, calculate the emissions so you can then see the contribution towards targets that have been set up. So it could be at a project level, but also then aggregating it up to a kind of higher level um, to outputs that align with CDP um, disclosures. 
particularly for projects, you might be accounting for a certain part of a project saving within the year. Um, so being able to sort of divvy up what you're recognizing within one reporting year and what will roll over within the initiative space um, can be a bit of a fiddly thing to do offline. Um, so that's a sort of key function that um, really sort of adds value um, for, for that reporting process. And then the other area um, for them that was really sort of key in terms of um, engaging with CDP was it really was looking at future proofing. Um, they'd not looked at assurance and third party verification before. So um, to be able to underpin reliable data, um, they were using a lot of the validation and assurance tools. Um, so these examples here are sort of different um, functions within the system um, that help with that um, process. So as non-financial data becomes more important for decision making, both internally, but also for investor audiences, um, really these days it's being treated with very much the same rigorous financial data. And so um, these types of tools are really what we see now um, with auditors that in terms of looking at third party verification um, of figures that would be reported. So finally, just to close out, um, I just got a map out here, um, having a look at um, CDP data collection. Um, so within the Greenstone platform here, um, we've just mapped in the different sections of the CDP questionnaire um, in terms of the data collection and, and sort of where that sits within the platform um, for, for aggregating that type of information. Um, they, CDP, as I say, um, it, it, what it, we really see is it does help companies um, put that sort of very focused lens on the data that they are collecting and treating it with more rigor. Um, and so where we've encouraged clients to, to start reporting, um, there's really then been that kind of key step change in terms of their engagement with some of those tools uh, and sort of um, more focus on, on collecting um, more reliable information. So we've had a few questions through um, through the GoToWebinar, so thank you for those. What we'll do um, is we'll aggregate those questions together and send them around um, as an FAQ document along with the recording um, of today's webinar presentation. Um, so you'll be able to access um, the recording and the slides through that as well. If you um, think of any further questions, then please feel free um, to contact Greenstone about um, the software that we provide and how that links with CDP reporting. Um, and if you have any direct questions for CDP related to this year's um, 2019 CDP disclosure process, um, then please obviously do get in touch with CDP directly um, if, you, if you have any of those as well. So that just leaves me to say thank you for attending. Thank you very much to um, Faye from CDP um, for joining You're us welcome. today. Um, great, well thanks Faye and thanks everybody. Um, and yes, good luck to everybody um, with this year's CDP disclosures. Thank you. Bye.